Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show you guys how to do my favorite hair curling technique only using a flat iron and a pencil. So keep watching. You're gonna wanna part your hair and it's gonna be a super, super thin section because these are very small curls and you'll see. So you're just going to want to brush out that little thin layer of hair. I haven't brushed or done my hair today, so yeah. <laughs> it's a little bad. Okay, so after you heat up your flat iron, and after you shave your pencil because you don't want to get the paint on the pencil on your hair, you're going to want to get a thin little layer like this. And you're just gonna wrap it around the pencil like a little snake. Then you just get your flat iron and you're just gonna put five seconds of heat all the way down. We have our first curl. They might look a little weird at first when they're all over your head, but after we're done with the whole head, we're gonna run our fingers through it and it's gonna look so natural, trust me. Get another piece. And we're just gonna do the same exact thing. What, you want to be in the video? <laughs> yes, she does. Okay. This process would probably go so much faster if two people did each side. <laughs> And I think the longest thing is just actually wrapping your hair around the pencil. It's a very weird technique, but when I heard about it, of course I had to try it because I love curly hair and I fell in love. <laughs> I used to watch a lot of tutorials on how to curl hair and none of them ever worked. And these curls usually stay in for me for about four days without washing it. Everyone's hair is different. Some people need to wash it more often. And I love this technique as well because it's very, very hard to burn yourself. The only other struggle I have with this technique is my arms always tend to hurt towards the end. And sorry I haven't posted a video in a while. I've been so busy trying to find a new job and cleaning my house in between and you know, doing things you gotta do. But, in a month, I'm going camping with my friends and Christina and Kalani maybe. So, I'm gonna be recording that. 
and it's gonna be awesome. I'm really excited. I've been camping like quite a few times with my dad and my family, but I've never been camping with like just friends. So it's gonna be so cool. I hope. <laughs> I was seriously debating on bringing like a huge knife just in case like I see a snake or something because I'm deathly afraid. It's a little difficult to be doing my hair with my dog sitting right on my lap. It gets kind of hard when you get to the back. Well, I don't know about for any of you, but my arms are really short. <laughs> I guess since this is taking a while, I'll just tell you guys a little bit about me since I haven't really talked about myself. Um, I'm 21. I live in Florida. I barely have a life. I'm a basic bitch. My fiance is 22 and we've been engaged for a while, I think two years now, but yeah. My favorite animal is an elephant, <laughs> I don't know why I had to think so hard about that. My favorite food is probably sushi definitely sushi the one with the fried shrimp and the avocado it's so good a lot of you guys also have been messaging me about my private life which i honestly haven't really talked about um about how I came out to my parents but to me it didn't really seem like that because I didn't just come out um, I kind of knew when I was in middle school I kind of like felt pressured into finding a boyfriend because that's what all the little girls were doing. Now that I look back, honestly, I think I was only doing it because everyone else was doing it. But um, when I was actually in fifth grade, I, for some reason, had a really big crush on my teacher, Miss Carcianico, which is weird because she was a little old, but that was my first crush and I really liked um, Regina from Mean Girls. <laughs> I loved Scarlett Johansson. Um, basically, I just always thought girls were like really pretty and I never really like thought men or boys were like attractive like that and I was definitely confused when I went to middle school that's when I first found out about like what being gay actually was so um, I actually remember I was walking around the track with some of my friends I don't really remember who they were because it was so long ago but um, I remember talking to them about it when I first realized like hey, I might actually, you know, like girls. Um, and I just remember them telling me like, you can't just automatically, you can't just all of a sudden like be gay, you can't just choose to be gay. But little did they know. I didn't even know, I was confused. <laughs> I haven't really had like any serious relationships because um, I had some very strict parents 
Well, my mom not so much, but my dad, he was a very strict guy. And um, he was overprotective, you know, he loved me, cared about me. And he just didn't think it was appropriate for me to have a boyfriend at that age. So, um, I just didn't have a relationship. I had like little school like relationships, but I mean, at school, it's not really, you know, serious. Maybe had like a kiss or two. Um, so when my, actually the first person that found out was my mom because um, I was talking to my mom when I was in like probably eighth grade and I don't know I wasn't even scared to tell her I just was talking to her and I was like I'm having a hard time deciding if I should date this girl or this boy and she was like what do you mean <laughs> and I kind of like specified it probably to her and um she didn't really care she didn't really say anything about it which was really surprising to me and I think I was kind of saying that to get like something out of her like to acknowledge that it's fine um so yeah she knew she was the first one to know um on the other hand since my dad is a very religious Christian man and um He's Hispanic, so that's probably where like the strictness comes from. But um, anyways, when he found out, he wasn't exactly um, happy about it. Um, we got into like a little argument and I fell into like this kind of depression because I didn't want to tell him about it because I was always kind of scared to bring up things that, you know, might create an argument or, you know, he's my dad. I don't want to start anything negative between us. So, um, my very first girlfriend, um, her name was Kimberly. We met when I was a freshman and she we met through a friend of a friend so she was my friend's friend and of course since i didn't want to tell my dad i told him that my friend wanted to sleep over and i was hardly even allowed to have friends sleep over so um it was cool it was fun and um that was the first time i really ever like kissed a girl and like just cuddled with a girl at night or even like spent the night alone with a girl like that or was I? so when my dad found out he wasn't happy at all um the story kind of is that um i had my first tiki and we both went down for breakfast And um, we first went down to breakfast downstairs and um, we were sitting at the table with my stepmom and my dad. And I just remember my dad saying, what is that on your neck? And it was a hickey. And I told him that I burnt myself with a flat iron. He was just like, you know, I can tell the difference. You know, I wasn't born yesterday, that kind of thing. And um, I just felt like I said into like this confusion and scaredness so um that's when I started having boyfriends and bringing them around my dad I've had three in high school and that was it nothing serious again like only at school like meet my dad maybe go somewhere with our family and that was really it this is another thing I have had depression and like cutting myself I don't do that anymore 
because you know that was when I was younger but um, I was lost and I was definitely confused so yeah I guess that's my coming out story that you guys were curious about well I guess I should tell you guys the more recent updated version <laughs> So, um, I always, since I started bringing boys around my dad, um, I think he thought it was just like a phase, but really I just wanted him to be happy and think kind of that it was a phase. After I moved out, I ended up getting my own apartment when I was 19 and with my fiance. I didn't want to hold anything back, so I just started um, posting you know, my fiance on Facebook so that all my family can see it, you know. Um, since I didn't want to verbally tell them, I just thought it would be easier just to post it or, you know. And since I was already 18, I wasn't really like worried about my dad taking my phone away or, you know, um, anyone judging me because at this point, I was just like, I'm grown. You know, I really love this girl and I don't care if anyone wants to judge me or not. Because at the end of the day, I just wanted to be happy. And I wasn't happy for a long time. So I'm happy now. Um, that's all that matters. My dad, it took him a while to get used to it and he's still slowly getting used to it. Um, we even stopped talking for a little bit for almost a year, I think we didn't talk, but it was all very worth it because I have my dad, I'm out, I'm happy, and I get to be myself, and I don't have to act like somebody I'm not, or have a boyfriend, which I didn't want. <laughs> and the best part is that I messaged my dad the other day about how important it was for him to have a relationship with Christina because you know it means a lot to me and it really is important to me and he told me that he would walk me down the aisle in our wedding so at that moment I literally just cried like I don't think I've ever had such a happy moment in my life but that was mine. And now, um, Christina's a part of my family. She knows all my family. I know her family. And everything is, everything worked itself out. So, if you're going through the same thing, honestly, I've had the strictest dad. If me and my dad can put aside our differences, then I definitely think you will be able to too. But um, it definitely takes time, you know? And it's probably not that they don't love you anymore, because it was definitely not that I know my dad loves me. Um, it's just the fact that, you know, they came from a different time you know like things are changing the world was different you know opinions are different now you know things are evolving into a better place um, but things really do work itself out so you know just give it time and just know it'll be okay it really will be I promise and even if your family, you know, chooses to disown you um, or, you know, throw you out, then you don't need them because if your family really loves you and supports you, then it doesn't matter what you are, an alien, if your skin color is green, if you're gay, if you're straight, if you don't want to be with anyone at all, like, if they can't support who you are as a person, then you don't you don't need them in your life just because your blood doesn't mean that 
you need to be family. You can pick and choose your family. That's what friends are for. And those are some encouraging words from my mom that actually um, helped me a lot to think about. But yeah, that's my coming out story. <laughs> my very first time talking about it. And definitely don't ever be someone you're not just to make someone else happy. Because I promise you, that's the thing that's going to hurt you the most. It really will. Okay, so that's the first layer. And we're not done because I still have all this freaking hair. So, now I get my handy dandy hair tie and I'm just gonna tie that up so it doesn't stick to my straight hair <laughs> okay and again we're just gonna have a tiny little layer down tiny tiny layer but yeah Anyways, um, I just can't express it enough, like, it really is important to be yourself. Don't try to make anyone happy, because if they love you, then they shouldn't make you different. They shouldn't want you to be someone you're not. This one is, like, really hard when you get the baby hairs. Um, I try to get all my baby hairs at the same time. But um, for this part, just like kind of angle your flat iron like this so you don't burn your ear. Because trust me, that freaking hurts. Kind of looks like a little earring. Another thing that I should probably say is even if someone doesn't accept you, I wouldn't go and be like, you know, fuck you. Don't be mean to them because you don't want the feeling of like hurt if they passed away. Like, like just think if they passed away, would you be happy with where you left the last situation at? Um, so it's always just really important just to be loving still, you know, still respect them. It doesn't define who you are. And you know, being nasty about it is just gonna show like a bad side of you that I don't think anyone would really like to see because we don't need negativity in this world. But um, just be the bigger person you know and just give it time, just wait. It's all you can do. Or, you know, sit down and have a conversation with them. Or if it's hard, like for me, I used to write letters because um, for me it was really hard to get out my emotions verbally. So I would write letters to my parents and it, it really helps. It's definitely good like if you have anxiety. I'm sorry about like the bad camera quality. Um, I would do this in my room, but it's really dirty. I haven't had time to clean it, so we're in the living room today. Another thing I wanted to talk about is how important it is to just stay positive because if you have a negative mindset, you're not gonna be happy and it's gonna start issues. It's just gonna start bottling up and it's just gonna get worse and worse and you know, what this world really needs right now is positivity and just niceness. Like, my grandpa always used to say, every day, do one kind thing for another and do one thing for yourself. And it's easy as, you know, just holding the door open or, um, you know, complimenting someone. It's really easy. It's all respect. 
this world needs a lot of it. I don't know how old you guys that are watching this, but you know, us younger generations, we're the ones that really need to practice this because, you know, the world is a really negative place and it needs people like us that try to spread the positivity, you know? You don't ever know what someone's going through. You never know. Bullying people because, you know, they might not look normal. And this world has just become so bitter and like nasty. You don't need that. We need to accept everyone. How would you feel if someone treated you like that, if that was you? That's what you need to think like. We're gonna be the ones left in the world. You know, the old people, I hate to say old, but they're old. The old people, they're gonna die off, you know? Racism is eventually gonna die off. Homophobia is gonna die off. Well, that was a good talk. So this is what it looks like when it's done and then we're just gonna brush our fingers through it now. If you have thick hair like I do, I usually do the bottom layer like this first and then I flip my head over like this. And then I kind of do it like downwards. And I go from like all the way, like all the way to the root and pull down. Just like a really thick comb. I wouldn't um, use like a brush or anything to brush it out. Because then it would just get really bushy. But yeah. So this is the final look. I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you want to try it out and tell me um, how it went, that would be awesome. But um, subscribe and enjoy. Thank you.